an ice cream tub has a, a straight sloping side. So this is the side of the ice cream tub. So this is the side that is sloping and straight, okay? And is circular at the top and bottom. So the base is circular and the top is also circular. The tub is symmetrical. That means if you cut this into two pieces uh, vertically, you'll get two uh, equal or symmetrical uh, sides. Calculate the volume of the tub when the radius of the base is 3 centimeters. <clears throat> so the base radius is 3 centimeters and the top radius is 4 centimeters and the height is 5 centimeters. So let us change this into a graphical representation. So this is your y axis and this is your x axis. And I'm going to draw a sloping line to model the sloping side. So this is say 3 centimeters here. Yes, say I'm going to slope slightly. So this is a model of this side. So this is this point is 3 comma 0 and the height of this is 5. So this is uh, 0 comma 5. I'll explain this and this point is this distance is 4. The top radius is 4. So this is 4 comma 4 comma 5. So let me explain this in a slightly different way. So this is 4 comma 5. So what I'm saying is this is the base, okay, which is circular. This is the base and let me draw uh, the other side. So the other sloping side may look somewhat like this. And this is the top. Okay, so this is the top, which is also circular. Okay, so this is modeled by this uh, graph. Okay, so this, if you're rotating this line over your y axis, if you're rotating this over y axis, you're going to get the volume of this tab. Okay, so this tab is represented graphically here. So so this radius is 4, this radius is 4 centimeters, the top radius is 4, and the bottom radius is 3. I hope you, now you can see the complete picture. Okay, and now we want, if you rotate this line segment over y-axis, so this is the x-axis and this is your y-axis, we get the volume of this tub. Now to find the volume of this tub, we need to find the gradient of this line. Now, to find the gradient, the first thing that we do is to find always the, uh, sorry, to write the equation of a line, the first thing that we do is to write the gradient. So, this is your rise. So, rise is from 0 to 5. So, your rise is 5 and your run is 1. So, let me use a different color. So, your gradient M is 5. So, just from this, I can say the equation of the line is 5x plus C. 5x plus c. Now I can substitute this point because this is a point on the line. So when x is 0, y is 3. So 3, sorry, when x is 0, y is 3. So I can put 0 in place of y. So 0 is equal to 5 times 3 plus c. So I hope you understand c is negative 15. So the equation of this line is y is equal to 5x minus 15. It doesn't make sense because if this line is extended, you can visualize it, it will have a negative y-intercept. If this extends, and this will intersect the y-axis at negative 15. That's what we are trying to say. So now, we, <coughs> now to find the volume, as you always should be doing, it's always good to visualize it. So imagine this is an infinitesimally thin line segment. Imagine this is an infinitesimally thin line segment. So this is a slice. Imagine this is a line segment of uh, length x. This is the length is x. And your thickness, the thickness of this line is line segment is dy. And when, when you're rotating this over your y-axis, what are you going to get? You're going to get a slice. So let me draw, try to draw a slice, which is, hopefully I'll explain, try to explain. 
Okay, so this imagine this is a slice. Slightly make this bigger. Okay, so this is imagine this is the slice that you're getting. Uh, almost there. I think you can see it now. So this is a a circle. Okay. So for this circle, the radius. So let me write with a different color. For this, for this slice or for this disk. The radius is x. Your radius is x, and your and your thickness of that, or your height or thickness, is how much dy. So the volume of one disk. So volume of one disk. Disk would be the area of the circle times the thickness. So area of the circle is pi times r squared times your thickness. The thickness of that disk, this would be the thickness. I hope you can see this is a thickness. This thickness would be dy. Okay. I'm not very good in drawing 3D. I hope you can visualize this. The thickness of this disk, which is infinitesimally thin, is going to be dy. So the volume of one disk would be pi r squared times dy. And your r is nothing but x. So this is pi x squared, pi x squared dy. And if you add all the disks from 0 to 5, you'll get infinite disk from 0 to 5. And if you add all these infinitely, infinitely thin disks, you'll get the volume of this uh, ice cream tub. OK, so the total volume is, so the volume would be the integration would be the integration of 0 to phi pi x squared pi x squared dy okay now what is now we need to write this in terms of x so can i write this as y plus 15 over phi is equal to x making x the subject because we want this to be written as x squared. And x has to be written in terms of y because we are integrating with respect to y. So this is uh, integration of z indefinite integration of 0 to pi phi. You can take the phi, pi out, which is y plus 15 over phi, the whole squared dy. So let's simplify this slightly. So this is pi times integration to 0 to phi. Squaring both of them, so this is y plus 15, the whole squared over 25 dy. Now you can take the 25 out, so this is pi over 25 integration of 0 to phi of y plus 15, the whole squared, y plus 15 the whole squared dy. Okay, so this is equal to pi over 25. Let's expand this, so let's make it a polynomial. So this is y squared plus, this is y plus 5 times y plus 5. That will be 30y plus 15 squared is 225 dy. 225 in the bracket and dy. So now let us integrate this, this polynomial. So this is simple. So this is pi over 25 times integrating this. This is y cube over 3 plus 30y squared over 2 plus 225y. And put the limits of integration from 0 to 5. Okay. So now you have to put the value. So let us simplify this a slightly more. This is pi over 25 times. This is y cube over 3 plus 15y squared plus 225y 0 to 5. Okay, 30 divided by 2 is 50. Now you have to put the upper limit of phi and take away the lower limit of 0. So this is pi over. 25. So if you put phi, phi cube is 125 over 3 plus 
15 times, so let me write this, so this is 15 times 25 plus 225 times 5. This is substituting the upper limit. So let me scroll this to this side. Minus the lower limit. What's the lower limit? The lower limit is 0. So if you put 0 here, it will be 0 plus 0 plus 0. It's not going to make any change. Okay, so this it becomes so this becomes pi over 25 times uh, this is, let me get the calculator. So this is 125 oops 125 ABC3, I want an exact answer, plus 15 times 25, plus 225 times 5, uh, equal, which is 4625, so let me write that, 4625 over 3, 4625 over 3. And now I have to divide by 225. So this is so 4625 times 1 ABC 25, which is 185 pi over 3. So the exact answer is 185 pi over 3 centimeter cube. Okay, now if you want to write this as a decimal, this is 185 times pi divided by 3, which is 193.7 centimeter cube, 193.7, so the exact answer in 1 dp, 193.7 centimeter cube is the volume of this, so this in 1 centimeter cube is 1 milliliter, so if you want to write this as milliliters, it's 193.7 milliliter because one centimeter cube is equal to one milliliter okay i want you to look at this question this is a challenging question so the same question if you want to generalize it the radius the bottom radius is given to be say small r the small this is uh, the bottom radius as a is a small r and this is capital r this radius the radius of the top circle it has a radius of r and the height is h so can you prove this yourself show that the formula for the volume of any ice cream tub with a base radius of small r and a top radius of capital r and a height of h can be found by this formula 